We have received some feedback from our students in the UAE, in the UAE, KSA, and Qatar, saying that they've been getting some questions in the exam on the interquartile range, and specifically on how to calculate the interquartile range. Now, in our previous videos, if you've seen the videos of this chapter, <clears throat> You'll notice that we covered the interquartile range, but we covered it quickly. Uh, and we said that the, the questions in the exam that come on the interquartile range are basically, um, where do you rank a certain investment compared to its peers? So we said, for example, if CISI gives you uh, this number of funds from fund A to fund L, I think this is what, 12? Yeah, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 funds. <clears throat> and CRSI asks you uh, a certain fund, where would you place it? A fund with a 7.9%, where would you place it? We said you have to take the quartiles. That means divide, divide your set into quartiles, divided by four. So the first quartile or quarter will be ABCD funds, ABC funds. The second quartile will be these. The third quartile, GHI. And the fourth quartile will be JKL funds. So if CSI gives you a question that says, fund Z, where, do, where would you place it? Well, if fund Z has a return of 7.9%, it's going to fall <clears throat> somewhere here between B and C. So it's going to be in the first quartile. Uh, this is what we covered in uh, our previous video. But we've been getting questions or inquiries from our students who have taken the exam saying that they got a, that they got a question on interquartile range. And the question was, how do you calculate the interquartile range? So it wasn't a question on where would you place <clears throat> a certain fund or investment. It was calculate the interquartile range. Well, uh, we're going to show you now how to calculate it. It's, it's very simple. Uh, it's, it's very easy. It just involves a couple of steps. Now, the first thing to keep in mind is if CISI asks you to calculate the interquartile range, they will no longer give you an even number of investments. They're going to give you an odd number of investments. So they will not give you 12. They'll probably say 13 or maybe 11 or 15 or 17 funds. Because in order to calculate the interquartile range, you will need to, to, to find the median. Remember the median? The median is the number in the middle of the set. So let's look at this example here. So it's the same, it's the same question from the previous page. It's just that now we are going to calculate the interquartile range. So we said if you had a question in the exam on calculation of the interquartile range, we said you should expect an odd number of investments. Here we have investment A to L. 12 funds. In the exam, CISI is going to give you an odd number. So probably they're going to give you 13 funds. So let's say we're going to add one more fund here, fund M, and let's give it a, let's say, a return of 3.2. If CISI asks you to calculate the interquartile range for these funds, before I continue, I think probably some of you are asking, well, Karim, what if they give us an even number and told us to calculate the range? They won't. Why? Because this is not a qualification for it. Calculating the median is easier <clears throat> when you have an odd number of data. If you have an even number of data, you're going to have to take the two numbers in the middle, take their average. You know, it's just they won't do that. So if you're asked to calculate the interquartile range, then the number of investments that CISI will give you will be an odd number. So I added one more fund here, fund M. And we give it a return of 3.2. So the first thing to do when we are calculating the interquartile range is to just look at the name. What is the interquartile range? You know, if you take a second and just think about it, it's simple. We covered the range, remember, from the previous videos. What is the range? The range is the highest number minus the lowest number. That was the range. Right? Well, if that was the range, what is the interquartile range? Is it, is it the highest return minus the lowest return? No. That's not the interquartile range. In order for you to find <coughs> the interquartile range, 
the first thing we need to do is find the median of this data. <clears throat> the median is the number in the middle. Since we have 13 investments, so the median is going to be probably, let's one, two, three, four, five, six. So G will be the median, I think. <clears throat> let's see. So you've got six funds here. At one, two, three, four, five, six, six funds here. So G is the median. That's the first step. When you take the median, what happens here? You suddenly have two sets. You have this bottom set and you have these top sets. So when you can find the median, the second step is find the medians of the two sets. That's it. <clears throat> what is the median of these two sets? Well, if you take a J and K, <clears throat> the median of J and K, sorry, uh, the median of, uh, of the sets of H to M is the average of J and K, because there is no number in the middle. What's the average of J and K? 4.75 uh, plus 4 divided by 2. Let me just do this calculation quickly. So 4.75 plus 4 divided by 2. So the median here would be 4.375. And what's the median for the top set? Well, since this is A, B, C, D, E, F, these are six funds. Again, there is no median. So we have to take the average of the two middle numbers. So 7.5 plus 7 divided by 2. So 7.25. You know, now you have the top median and you have the bottom median. Now you take the range. Take the range of the two medians. So what's the range of the two medians? So it's the higher number, 7.25, this one, minus the lower number, the lower median, 4.375. What's the range here? Let me just do the calculation quickly. So that's going to give you 2.875. That's the range. Interquartile means between the quartile. So we are looking at the range between these quartiles. I'm going to clear the screen, basically erase everything on the screen, and then repeat everything again from scratch. It's really simple, but let's just repeat it again. Let me clear the screen. Let's calculate the interquartile range. So the first thing we need to do is find the median. Now, we said here there are 12 funds. You're most likely in the exam going to get an odd number of funds. So we're going to add one more here, M. We're going to give it whatever it is. doesn't matter what the return of M is. So now we have 13 funds. So in order for us to find the median of these 13 funds, well, it's just the number in the middle. So G is the median here, 5.75. That's the median. Why? Because it splits the data set into two halves. You've got from A to F, so these are six investments, and you've got from H to M, these are six investments. So yes, G is the median. That's the first step. The second step is find the median of the two sets. Now that we split them into a top set and a bottom set, let's find their medians. What's the median of investments A to F? Now, these are six funds, right? Uh, if you have an even number, you can't, there is no number in the middle. There's no median here. You have to calculate it. It's the average of these two numbers in the middle. So 7.5 7 plus 7 divided by 2, their average is 7.25. This is the average of these two numbers. So this is the top median. 
What's the bottom median of the bottom set? Well, it's 4.75 plus 4 divided by 2. That's going to give you 4.375. Again, H, I, J, K, L, M. These are six funds. There is no median. You have to calculate the median. The median is the average of the two numbers in the middle. 4.75 plus 4 divided by 2. That's going to give you the bottom median. Now that you have the top median and you have the bottom median, let's get the range. This minus this equals to 2.75. That's the median. So after you find the median of the two sets, the top and the bottom sets, after you do that, the third thing is just to find the range. Find their range. So the range here is 2.875. The range is actually the range between the top and the bottom medians. And how do you get the top and the bottom medians? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to split the data into two halves. That's when you get the top half and the bottom half. And then you do the median for the top half, and then you do the median for the bottom half. Once you get the median, the top median for the top half, and then you get the bottom median for the bottom half, just take their range. This minus this equals to 2.875. This is the calculation for the interquartile 